welcome to economic classes number 3 i am basura sir in the last class we were discussing about introduction to microeconomics and we have discussed so many of different concepts in the same chapter in the last class we just gone through with different types of economic systems that is socialist economy capital economy and mixed economy so these all are the different economic systems we have gone through with very clearly in the last class and we also gone through with some of other uh, concepts like uh, positive economics normative economics and the differentiation between both of these in today's class we are directly going through with the inductive method and deductive method and some of other different concepts so what are these two methods that we have in economics usually inductive method and deductive methods which are related to deriving the conclusions if a conclusion which is going to derive from an individual as a universe as a whole that is called inductive method take an example here if i say that let us have a class today and by the words of mine if you listen and you attend my classes and that is called inductive method how it is inductive method as an individual as you whole you are accepting the decision the conclusion that what i say to you from an individual you people you are accepting as a whole that is called inductive method in other words we also call deriving the conclusions from particular to as a whole universe as a whole universe okay so this is how deriving the conclusion as already given in the by the example in the same way deductive method it is opposite to inductive method what i said in inductive method deriving the conclusion from individual to universe or as a whole but here in deductive method what we are going to say deriving the conclusions as a whole to an individual from you people that what you all are there from you and from for me whatever you say if i listen as a whole to an individual or particular particular then we are going to call it as a deductive method say the same if you say sir we don't want class today if i listen from you as a whole to me as an individual then it is called i have taken a decision we all have taken a decision that is as a whole to an individual or as a whole to as a particular that is called deductive method so one more time i just recall these two inductive method is deriving the conclusion from an individual to universe whereas deductive method is deriving the conclusions as a whole or as an universe to the particular or an individual here some of the profounders some of the developers of these uh, uh, two methods are here so that is frederick list rocher hild and brand in the same way uh, in case of uh, that is what deductive method gears uh james kinnis and alfred marshall and uh, some of other different economist have uh, uh, propounded these two uh, different techniques i hope you have got this okay so let us go for the next one that is pps or production possibility set what is this production possibility set as from the beginning of this class we are saying right we are in a scarcity whatever resources which are available to us we have to go for effective utilization of those resources so here production possibility set which tells us that how the resources are effectively utilized within the given amount of technology so whatever we are going at present situation we have to use at least a minimum technology okay so production possibility set which explains or which defines where the different goods and services are going to produced effective way by the use of technology and the availability of the resources and that is how it is called production possibility set the production possibility set we have uh, we can also understand with the help of diagram here so this is the diagram where you can see here so ox axis which explains ox axis which uh, which consist of wheat and whereas o y axis which consist of cotton just say that within the availability of resources resources take for example we have 1 acre of land within 1 acre of land we have to produce wheat 
are cotton or both cotton and wheat so so uh, here uh, we have made some of the combinations take for example 1 quintal of wheat and uh, 9 quintal of uh, cotton and the same way 2 quintal 2 quintal of uh, wheat and uh, 7 quintal of uh, uh, cotton and so on so like this we are making different combinations of these two goods within the availability of the resources as i said the resources which is 1 acre of land and what is the technology we are using in the land we may use the tractor or for some of the equipments for the purpose of cultivation and yielding the crops so here we are yielding or we are growing the crops of wheat and cotton within the availability of minimum resources and how we are using them in a effective way by the use of little amount of technology and if any of the points which come below to this production possibility curve it is a curve where we are going to say it is a graphical representation of production possibility set it is it is also called as transformation curve transformation curve which means the resources what we have that converted into meaningful or useful end final goods and services so that is what we are going to call it as a transformation curve so as i was saying any points which come below to this ppc production possibility curve they are called they have not effectively utilized they have inefficiently utilized so the points whatever they are going to lie on the same curve which represents all the resources have effectively utilized and that is how the scarce resources are effectively utilized in order to produce different goods and services okay so this is important from the point of examination for four marks and also some of the questions may ask on this production possibility curve and set well so coming to the last topic of this chapter that is on the basis of subject matter of economics on the basis of subject matter of economics the total economics has divided into two things two main heads two broad categories what are those micro economics and macro economics micro economics so we might have heard something which related to micro micro which means small macro big so that is what to see small things we use microscope whereas to see big things which are there are which are so far to us in the sky that is what we use an instrument that is macroscope so microscope micro economics and macro economics originally introduced by professor ragnar frisch in the year 1920 so in the year 1920 for the first time these two words have been introduced by professor ragnar frisch and he has awarded the nobel prize for the first time in the world in the year 1929 see for the first time in the world who has got the nobel prize for economics is none other than ragnar frisch in the year 1929 for the purpose of what in order to introduce micro and macro economics okay so according to him micro and macro so these are the two words which have derived from greek words micros micro it's a it's a word which has derived from greek word that is micro which means micros in uh, english term that is small macro macros in english it is big or huge so these are the two words which have been introduced by ragnar frisch and after that uh, these two words have profoundly developed by two more uh, economists uh, that how we are we have to remember at this time that uh, macro economics developed by alfred marshall whereas macro uh, macro economics as uh, developed by j m keynes micro alfred marshall macro j m keynes okay so this is how we are going to say so coming to the meaning point of it as i already told micro economics is a study of small things or individual or particular things coming to the examples so what all we are going to study in micro economics we study an individual things for example about a producer about a firm or about a consumer about a product or about a uh, any of the things which are diff different particularly an individual so that is what all the things we are going to study in the 
microeconomics and macroeconomics where we study together or wholly so that is all so macroeconomics is a study of all the things grouply or together or as a whole okay so this is all macroeconomics if we differentiate micro and macroeconomics so how we are going to differentiate so coming to this uh, microeconomics is a study of economics by individually or bit by bit or particularly whereas macroeconomics is a study of economics as a whole and this is the one first point coming to the second point microeconomics is a narrow scope so as i already told it it covers only a small part of as whole universe whereas macroeconomics which covers of broad scope micro micro microeconomics narrow scope macroeconomics broad scope this is the second point coming to the third point microeconomics does not give clear picture because it studies of small thing it doesn't cover of each and everything of which are there in the universe so it doesn't give clear picture whereas coming to the macroeconomics it gives the clear picture what gives the clear picture macroeconomics gives the clear picture because it studies as a whole economy so that we get a clear picture of the economy in the macroeconomics and coming to the next one that is our in the microeconomics microeconomics neglects macroeconomics whereas macroeconomics neglects microeconomics why because i already told you these may be interdependent one another micro which study small it doesn't study as a whole so it neglects macro macro it studies as a whole it doesn't study small so it neglects micro so these two one another they are going to neglect this is also one of the points so coming to the examples point of view so as i already mentioned the example for microeconomics individual study individual consumer individual producer individual product individual firm etc 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 okay so coming to the macroeconomical examples aggregate total aggregate output aggregate savings aggregate unemployment aggregate employment aggregate uh, gdp aggregate growth so total as a whole we are going to take into consideration in the macroeconomics so microeconomics is also called as price theory this kind of questions may be asked again in the competitive exams microeconomics is called as dash so it is called as what price theory whereas macroeconomics is called as income theory micro price theory macro income theory and uh, coming to the next one microeconomics is also called as bottom up approach bottom up approach whereas macroeconomics is called as top bottom approach and the last point in this that as i already told you the development developer of uh, this microeconomics is alfred marshall whereas uh, the developer of uh, this particular macroeconomics is jm kings so like that we will study economics in detail with a introduction till to the conclusion of one chapter after one chapter so in this first chapter we have just gone through with the introduction of microeconomics and some of the introduction topics which are there in this first chapter that all we have understood very clearly i hope so so in the next class we go through with the second chapter thank you